Hello, hello, all. It's Lori and Mr. Lori, Mr. Clinton Conway. <laughs> Super excited tonight for our call guest. She is going to be rocking some of the questions that we have had over the last several weeks and over the last couple of days. You guys have been um, getting your questions in. And, you know, the queen of It Works, Pam Souter, she's a chief networking officer, but not only a chief network, networking officer, she is the co founder of this crazy rap thing. And, Pam, we couldn't be more excited to have you on the call tonight. If it weren't for you finding that crazy rap thing and working your business through the trenches, we would not be here. So, we thank you so very much for all the time and hard work that you have put into this business to be able to bring it to our life. So, thank you so much. And thank you so much for coming on tonight and talking to our team. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you both for being who you are and building the way you build. It's been tremendous. I mean, you're, you're, this team is explosive, and we've been watching this team for a while, and we're very, very proud of what all of you have accomplished. Um, uh, you know, Lori and Quentin have really proven themselves as, as leader, leaders in our company, and we're just we're very, very proud of them and their leadership. They've got great people skills uh, along with just they get it. They just get the ability on how to build, how to put teams together. So I'm thrilled to be on this call. I, I know that you guys are right now in the top ten as far as money earners. So I, for all of you on the call tonight, I would just listen, pay attention, and watch them. And then whatever they suggest that you do, for now I, I would do it. I would just uh, listen to them. They, they know how to build a business. Uh, they're they're building it the right way. They're building it uh, through integrity, through honesty, and, and they're getting there. And they're taking a lot of you with them. So, again, you know, wh whatever I talk about tonight, uh, just take that in as well and then follow, follow them. And, you know, they're going to guide you on exactly how to build your business and they're going to take you right along to the top with them. So, very proud of both of you, uh, Mr. Lori and Miss Lori. I just think y'all are wonderful. <laughs> Quentin, we love your name out there, too. You're helping a lot of the guys get over themselves. So I'm going to get right to the questions. And uh, there's a couple things I want, to, uh, I want to start with, and that's what we get paid for. And I think that we, we as a team, we as a company, need to understand what we get paid for. And this is what was really uh, I have to focus in on every day, knowing what my job is, what my responsibilities are, and where I don't know, I, I don't need to be putting my time and energy, which costs money. And that is, uh, for you all, you get paid to do two things. That is bring on board brand new di distributors and new customers. That's what you get paid for. And then, of course, as you start bringing on new distributors, your distributors get paid for the same thing. So you will be uh, building through uh, layers of business here, which increases your income and your volume, obviously. Uh, your volume is what increases that income. So we need to understand right now, until I firmly believe this, until your presidential diamond, I, I would not be doing anything outside of focusing in on my team and specifically myself. And that is because you need to be building your business. You need to know that you get paid to do those two things. So focus in on what you're primarily getting paid for, and that is bringing in brand new distributors and new customers. It's not being on Facebook and leadership pages. You're not ready until your presidential diamond. I, I would not start your own Facebook group, your Facebook team. I would plug in to your presidentials or your ambassadors, which would be the Conways. I would uh, uh, free yourself up from that. If you're starting to do that, uh, just take a look at how much time that is eating into your daily business. And it's taking away from you being able to do what is paying you. And a lot of times we do that for a couple of reasons. We we feel it's necessary to stay plugged in with our teams. And, and yes, you can do that through other ways. But we also feel like, well, that's our responsibility. I, I want to be at the t at top of my leadership team. And I totally get that. I understand that. But it's taking away 
from your uh, from you being able to put more money in your pocket and that's what we're all in this for is to make as much money as possible especially in these times this is this is the best time to be a part of this company we're we're leaving the best year we've had headed into an even more extraordinary time and I I truly believe the next 5 years are going to be extraordinary so we want to know where to be spending our time. So I would suggest, if you're not Presidential Diamond, is to put your Facebook teams into a Presidential Diamonds or above Facebook team. Let those questions that need to be answered get answered through guiding them to where the answers can be found, not answering all the questions. It's just like raising kids. If Lori and Conway have, uh, uh, Lori and Quentin have four, they they can't be answering all their questions all the time for the rest of their life. So they have to teach them, they have to coach them, they have to let them evolve and find out where they can find the answers to these questions or they're just going to continually be answering them. It's no different for us. If someone says, where do I find that call that was on Monday night on Pam's call, go to the calendar. Just tell them, Give them the link, but don't it just let them start finding this stuff on their own. How, how do I find out about this? Go into your e suite. Have you listened to the training academy? Free yourself up to be wrapping people, to be bringing in loyals, to be bringing in distributors. You're you're gonna love it when you do that. You're you're spending way too much time in management mode, which costs you and your team money. If they see you doing that. They're going to start doing that. They're going to start doing that. And that's the last thing any of you want to do. So I hope that that makes sense. I just thought in every call, I've prefaced every call with that just so we know where to be spending our time and when we should be branching off. Okay, one of the questions that was asked here is how do, we, how do you react when leaders leave to go to other companies? Well, this in recruit recruit your teams. You got to look at that word uh, that you're using here, leaders. A, a real leader in our business, I don't care if they're triple diamond or above, uh, they, if, if, you know, just because they have the title doesn't necessarily mean the income is there. They might not have built the, uh, the structure of their business properly and they've lost most of their income, which tells me that they needed to hone in on their leadership skills. They needed to hone in on their building skills. Somebody making the kind of money that a double diamond and above makes uh, will not leave this company. They just won't. Uh, They're making too much money to leave. So we've got to look at that first. Are they truly earning the income in that position? And I can assure you that they're not. Now, if if one out of uh, a handful that's gone is, then... Uh, which I don't know of any that has, but let's say that someone does, then what they're thinking is I can go over to this company and because of who I am, I feel like I can bring a lot of people with me and maybe I'll have the opportunity to be Lori and Quentin over there. Maybe I'll have the opportunity you know, to make a six-figure monthly income. If I don't feel like I have it here, well, they need, need to really question that because they do have it here. They have the potential here. They have the ability here. If they'll, if they'll uh, get their skills right. But see, unfortunately, what happens is they take themselves with them. They take themselves with them to the next company, and they'll be doing the same things over there that they did here, and they'll wonder, well, I'm not getting any further here. It looked better over here, but I'm just not getting there. And, and you know, when I look at our company, and, of course, you know, I, I'm prejudiced about our company. I just feel like Mark and I have done uh, everything that we would want humanly possible in a company. And, you know, I was the first person out there marketing this plan, uh, marketing this product. And, I, you know, I, I just know what we have our hands on. I mean, when you can lead with, with the wrap and, and get the uh, the skepticism that you get, which I embrace because that tells me I'm on the money, and I get the, the the looks that I get of curiosity, and I can get them get it on them very very quickly, uh, and I can make money doing that. I mean, that's just gosh, just think about it. That is incredible. 
Nobody else has that. Nobody else has a first-to-market product like the rep. They may have something else that works, and kudos to them. There's a lot of great companies out there. Uh, they're just not for me. Uh, they, I, you know, I looked at everything before we found this this product and started this company, and everything was a Me Too product. I could get it at CVS. I could get it at Walgreens. I could get it at the grocery store. I could get it at Walmart. I could get it online. I could get it through another company. So embrace what you have. If if someone has left your company, if they if if they've left our company, I, I don't look at it any other way than they're gone. You know, they lost their dream here. Unfortunately, that they felt they felt that they they could find it better somewhere else. It's no different than you know. Um, being married and suddenly you're not in love with your spouse anymore. It doesn't mean they're a bad spouse. It just means you go out of love with them. Is this somebody else? They're the, they're the golden spouse. So, you know, don't get caught up in that. Pe- people quit. That's what people do. They, You know, they join um, to be a, a Boy Scout and they never make it to Eagle. Only 1%. And they, they start playing football and only 1% goes to the end. In- the NFL, only 1% of basketball players, if even that, go to the NFL. So you, you've just got, or the NBA, so you've just got to understand that people quit. That's what people do. The difference between them and you is I hope that you have the ability to understand what you have your hands on. And if they're taking people within your organization, they're not all in. It's just a weeding out process, and what that does is that, that allows people to go so that people can be so that new ones can come in. You know, I don't lose one moment of sleep over this because I just know it's the nature of the game. But what I do always look at is who we are, stay focused there. Uh, become better at leading, become better at communicating, become better at understanding the nature of the product, become better at the compensation plan, become better at whatever you need to get better at and know that you have your hands on what we feel is the most lucrative compensation plan in the industry with the most unique, intriguing product that has ever hit the marketplace in our lifetime for the arena that we're in. So let's just have fun with it. Allow them to go. Don't badmouth them. Don't uh, look down on them. They left. That's what people do. It has nothing to do with I didn't do enough, um, I could have done more. No, you did whatever you could do. They just lost their enthusiasm. They lost the fun in building their business. They, uh, they, for who, who knows why they left? You know, it could be various reasons. The thing is, they did. And uh, what I want you to do is take care of your business. If they are coming into your organization, and make sure that compliance knows it, and make sure that you can track it by uh, something online, something in print so that we can know and we'll take care of it for you immediately. So know that we have your back on that. All right, let's move on. Um, how do we, let's see, how do we effectively get people off of this? Well, you can, add, you know, there's some scripts on my page. Um, if you go to my Facebook page and click like and you can go into the notes section, there are scripts there to help you get people off the fence. And one of the best ones that's really been working is if you talk to somebody and you continually try to communicate with them and they're just not moving, you can ask them, hey, is there is there something I did to offend you? You can text them that. Is there something I did to offend you? And almost immediately they get back with you, oh, no, it's no, you didn't at all because they know you're a nice person. And uh, we've had... So many people use that line, then uh, and then immediately that person signed up, and, and then some people just love being on the fence. They they love the fact that they're um, that they're there, and you're you're you keep trying to get them off it. So you know, just every once in a while, try to poke them off the fence. But if you're staying around trying to to poke them all the time and not creating new business, you're losing money. Uh, I, I just just flag yourself to go back and try to poke them off that fence once a month, but 
don't stay there with them on the fence. I mean, you're sitting there right beside of them trying to poke them off. Move on. You know, this uh, you, they'll come into your ambassador business. They'll come into your presidential business. Uh, I, I have friends that just joined this lit this year because their kids came in under my daughter and started making a lot of money, and they're like, well, I should have gotten off this fence 10 years ago. Well, yes, but they didn't. So don't worry about it. But don't stay on the fence set and sit there with them. Continue to move on. Show them how active you are. Show them how much you're building your business. Maybe they're just waiting and watching, and that could be what they're doing. All right, so I'm curious what other countries. We cannot tell you um, what other countries were open. You can be as curious as you want to be. We're, I can't tell you that. Um, that is just information that we are not divulging. You will be, you'll have several um, we'll have several announcements at Freedom that uh, you'll get right in front of us, so just wait for that. Okay, is there any hope at getting the full line in Europe? Uh, always, there's always hope for that. It takes a tremendous amount of effort and a tremendous amount of energy to get supplements into foreign countries. Every country has different rules and regulations, and uh, it's very, very difficult. So we're constantly working on that. We have a tremendous international department that is working so diligently on a, a lot of countries, a lot of innovative ways to get products through these countries. So uh, all I can tell you is you have not opened your city yet. If you think your city is opened, your city is not opened. If you think your your state is open, your state is not open. We are not nearly ship, shipping enough product to any state or any city by any means to even think that they're remotely open. You want to be focusing on building in your backyard and throughout the United States until you reach a position at least of ambassador because at that point then you can afford the opportunity to go to these foreign countries once they're launched and be able to work with teams there because you're going to need to be with them just like you are with your current team. So focus on where we're open, not where we're not open. Also focus on what products we have in Europe and Australia and Canada and what we and don't focus on what we don't have. Let me tell you about France. France has grown in volume bigger than any country that we have and they've been open less than a year. And they told us specifically that they did not care if they had our supplements because our wrap made them so uniquely different than any company already out there. They said the other companies have supplements. The fact that we don't have them, we don't care. We have the wrap and we will get them on the wrap and then we'll get them using the monthly skincare products. So they're not concerned about it at all and they're going like gangbusters. Um, any news on Canada's center to help with exchange rate? Uh, we're always working with Canada. We're going to have some great things coming out for Canada in just a very short period of time. So all is good on the Canadian front. Okay, how do you keep the motivation going with your downline when they're not doing anything or even trying? <laughs> oh, this is so good. <laughs> oh, and they expect to get rich. Oh, Lord, help us all on this one. All right, so how do you keep the motivation going with your downline when they're not doing anything or even trying? Well, move on. Come on. Look, this is crazy. Yeah, let me just sit here. What, what, have I just, what did I just do? I'm not sitting on my butt waiting to get rich. I'm out getting rich, you know? I was just out three days, traveling four days this week, this past week. I'm not sitting down counting my money. No no wealthy person does that. They're out there working harder than anyone else. Look at them. Look at the wealthy people in America. They are out working every single day, re, or every single day creating new business, new avenues, new ways to use their money. If anyone has that mentality, then let them go. They're, you're never going to get rich sitting on your butt, ever. I've never watched anyone do it. That if if you have that mentality about network marketing, this is not the business for you. Absolutely, you are going to work harder 
than you've ever worked in your entire life, but you're going to do it in a short period of time, and that's the difference. So you're all working hard at your jobs. You're going to work there 30 or 40 years, and you're going to leave there with hardly anything. But you're going to work hard. It's going to seem hard. It's, you're never going to really get ahead. You've got to do something really different, and that is work very hard in a business like it works and, and develop the skills and hone those skills and, get, and let them get better and better and, and bring in more people constantly. That's what we're out doing. It would be like if Mark and I came out of conference. Let's say we walked out on stage and we said, 2013 was a fabulous year, everyone. We decided to maintain our business. We're just going to maintain it. Actually, we're going to take off for six months, and you guys just keep working, and we're going to maintain it. We're global. We, we feel like we're good. Well, our, we know we would come back in six months, and we wouldn't have much left. We know that. So we are out there as much as any of you, always creating new systems, better platforms for you, better tools for you, enhanced products for you, new products for you, enhanced comp plans. We are constantly striving to build a billion-dollar brand. And if you want to be a part of this company, then I would suggest to you that you get up and you go to work like you've never gone to work before because it's not just going to be handed to you. And you cannot motivate your teams. You can only inspire them. And the only way that I know to inspire anybody is by showing them my work ethic, by showing them and showing up. And that is by getting to a conference like Freedom 2014. You see, none of us ever just, uh, we can't just think we're going to do this. We, we, we just can't have faith automatically. It's very, very difficult. Lori comes to a Freedom Conference as a Ruby. Now, she's got some faith because the product worked for her, her business is starting to build, and she's a Ruby. But something happened to her at conference, and, and that is she, she something got within her. And she, you know, it could have been one word or a sentence or, or somebody walking across stage that inspired her. And she came back with more faith, more belief, more faith in the company, more belief in the company, but more faith and belief in herself. And that's why she's been able to do what she's done. And, you know, it's, it, it, uh, if she hadn't come to that, we might not be having this call. So, you know, for me to have faith in the product, I, I couldn't just hear it over the phone. I had to go and meet Luis. I had to sit with him and, and and talk to him for three days and understand his passion and, and hear his belief and his faith in the product. And and then I, then I could come back and then I could build. And then I, every once in a while I got to go get that again. I got to go get it again and I got to go get it again. So all of you, if you want to be inspired, if you want to be millionaires, you will be at conference. You will be at Freedom 2014. And you know what? If you don't come, I, my biggest fear is you won't come and you won't be here next year because you won't have that faith. You won't have that belief. You know, it's hard out there. you got people telling you no. you got people saying it doesn't work. You've got people saying nobody makes money in that. And you start to believe them instead of knowing that it could work, that it does work that you do know people that are making money, that you do know uh, lots of people making money, but you just don't have that core belief and faith yet, so you've got to come and get that stirred up within you. So you can't help people become rich if they're sitting on their butt. You can't. You have to move on. You have to show them the way by doing it, and that's what I do every day. I get up and I get going with excitement, with the passion, knowing that I, if someone leaves this company, it's, I, you know what, I can't allow that to affect me. If somebody's sitting there not doing anything, I can't allow that to affect me. All I can say is I'll show, I'll show them. I'll do it. I'll inspire them. I'll keep moving. I'll keep moving. So I, I hope that helps with that. Ideas on blitzing with three small kids in tow, blitzing from your house when you can't leave, uh, when and how to post, put, uh, 
on your business page, how to get more people to like your business page, what to what say, okay, here, there's a lot in this question. All right, I, I'm not a real good Facebook person. You know, I have a lot of people following me now, and, I, you know, I find that, that they, they love information. Um, they love um, quotes. Uh, they love personal pictures. Uh, what I would suggest is you get if you're really interested in learning how to build on Facebook, take an online course for Facebook, get a book on Facebook, uh, follow some that that have been real successful. I can't give you those tips. I just I'm just not a Facebook uh, tipper. You know, I just I use Facebook to connect with you all, but I, I get out in the marketplace. I get out and blitz. You know, I get out and talk to people. I, I can't set still. You know, I have too much energy, and, uh, you know, I just get out and talk to people. Uh, I meet people everywhere I go, and that's how I built this business for me personally. And then Facebook came along, and it's been a great tool for me to connect with all of you. But there are people that are building really strong businesses on Facebook. But here's the deal. You get people through your Facebook they want to be distributors, now what are you going to do with them? You still have to coach them on how to launch with a wrap party, how to uh, blitz on their own, how to use the party pad. So you still need to know those skills. So you just can't build online and think your business is just going to soar. You still have to uh, launch everyone that you might meet through online sources in the proper way. And, you know, uh, uh, Denise and Brandon were instrumental in building online and they were losing as many people as they were bringing in because they weren't giving, helping them with the skills that they needed to learn to get out and build like everyone else, which the majority builds at rap parties, the majority builds blitzing, the majority builds, uh, you know, texting, have you tried that crazy rap thing, offline ways to build. So uh, I, I realize that you're, you're a mom with three kids. I, I totally get that. The best person to talk to is Lori, who has four. I mean, she's one up on you. So she can one up you on that, and she is a top money earner. So Lori can, uh, Lori, can you come on and answer that? I, I say just do it. Yeah, I think absolutely. You know, I think the best way that I have built my business, um, you know, not necessarily online. I think what you said is perfect. Best offline. I think when you just are your normal, everyday person, you don't look for that perfect opportunity. You just are the opportunity. That makes a huge, um, you know, game difference for your entire business. When you're out and about and you have your kids with you, life is happening all around you, but be prepared to talk about your business at any point in time. So, you know, wear your T-shirts. Be a, you know, live, like Quinn and I say all the time, like live the blitz. Everywhere that you go, have a bracelet on or a T-shirt on, or have some kind of lime green on. Have your Blitz cards on you. You know, my kids are almost better than I am now because they will say to me, Mom, you need to Blitz that lady. Mom, you need to Blitz that guy um, if I, you know, forget to do that. So I think, you know, we are busy. Nobody gets into this business because they have extra time. And so if I couldn't find, um, you know, if I couldn't build this business with my family, I may not be where I am today. I had to find ways to build this business within my family, with my family helping and working with me. And so invite people to your house. Let them have their kid, you know, bring their kids with them. Have a family affair. It doesn't have to be a quote-unquote perfect little party setting. Life happens, and I think the more relatable you are, um, the more that people are going to walk into your life and say, gosh, you know, Lori doesn't have it together, and she still does really, really well. Her kids are running around like crazy. Her house is kind of a mess, but she's kind of a wreck, but she's doing very well with this business. And I think when people can look at you and say, I can do that, or maybe even I can do it better, <laughs> um, you know, then they, then they tend to jump on board with you. They think they can do it as well. They, you know, they see your love for the products and either jump on as a customer or jump on as a distributor because they know that busy or not busy, most of us are busy, that this business can be done. So, you know, blitzing is just, to me, is a no-brainer. It's an everything, everyday process thing for me. Every time I'm in or out of the house, I am, you know, I'm just talking about it and living that blitz. And, you know, I, I see more to this question, too. She's got a daycare, home, uh, job, six kids under four. 
you know, get some of those moms who's coming in and dropping off their kids who you're watching every day to to help you blitz too. Ask them if they can you can give them some cards. I mean, there's ways around. We have a lot of moms with eight, ten kids that are very successful in the business. So be get creative, um, you know, um, in your business and and just if you really want this to work for you, if you're really passionate about this, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, and you're going to be able, if you choose to later, to be able to give up that daycare and work this business full time. And the reason I know that we've had so many moms that were in that doing the same thing that were able to do that. And then, how do you overcome skeptical family members by doing it? By doing it. Look, that here you are. You've never done this before. Maybe you've tried multiple businesses and they didn't work, and that's your background. That's what they know you as. So they have every right to be skeptical. Just let them go. Do not just do it. You know, my father just just not even two years ago said, are you ever going to go back to teaching? You know, I just looked at him like, Dad, I love you so much. I can't believe you just asked me that. And, you know, you just <laughs> you just love them where they are. And a lot of it is they're afraid that you are going to make it happen. And then... Um, You'll leave them behind. They're they're fearful. They're so fearful of that. And guess what? You will leave them behind. You will. You will have this fabulous life, incredible life, with uh, with all that you want in life. And you'll be able to show them that. And everybody has skeptical family members in the beginning. My family is still not on board in this. Some some my brother's still not a customer. He's still not a customer. My own brother. And I just love him. You know, he's my brother. I leave him alone. And every once in a while, I'll poke him a little bit. But that's what I do, you know. And, and they've come and they've stayed at our home and they're just so thankful for what we have. But it's just not his cup of tea. And I can't make it be his cup of tea. But I can tell you this, I didn't listen to any of them. You know, I didn't listen to Skeptical Dave. My husband was so skeptical of this. He didn't like any of it for three years because he saw his wife gone, and we didn't. We were not paying ourselves for three years in this. So I was paying all my own expenses, everything to build this business. And here he sees money going out, nothing's coming in, and when's it? When's that going to end? And I'm telling you, Mark couldn't even look him in the eye for a long time because he knew what he must be thinking. And but believe me now, this guy is the happiest man alive. I've never I didn't even know he could smile this big. He wouldn't trade any of it for anything, but I wasn't gonna get listen to him. I wasn't gonna go there. I knew what I wanted and I went after it. So we're never gonna get rid of the skepticism. People are born and raised in this country to stand in line, to ask when to go to the bathroom, to ask when to eat, to ask how much money they can make. They're not born and raised to be entrepreneurs. This is totally different. So if you are trying to change them by having a conversation, you're wasting your breath. You, you, they change maybe over time as you start to change your lifestyle. That's when they start to really pay attention. Quit talking to them. Just go do it. Don't worry about them. They're going to be just fine, and you just go make as much money as you possibly can. So how to go from just blitzing and talking about the rap to getting a sale right on the spot. All right, so this also goes to how to get, um, I like this question too, ideas on approaching business owners like salons, chiropractors without looking like I'm selling them a gimmick, and how do you just walk in and sign them up? Okay, here's a couple of things. Some people, or if you're thinking this is a gimmick, or they're feeling that this is a gimmick, then you need to you need to own that. That's that's your perception. I would never walk in thinking I was selling a gimmick. So you have to you have to take a strong. Whoever wrote this, you have to really look in, in your core and wonder if you're thinking it's a gimmick. Uh, and I have a really strong feeling you do because you you asked me that question. So you and if you're sensing that yourself, they they're sensing that. We have chiropractors that have left their practice. We have salon owners. We have doctors. 
We have lawyers that have left their law practice to be an It Works Global distributor. And, and I'm sure they were all skeptical in the beginning. We all are. You know, that is that is just people's nature. The flags go up. We're skeptical. Now, this is what you do. You stand there in your power of faith knowing what you have your hands on. And you very lightly answer their questions. Don't get defensive with them. Don't try to get in a, a war of words with them. Just stand there knowing what you know. And and the, the skepticism starts to break down. So you're not selling a gimmick and you're not even selling anything. You're not trying. Get rid of trying to sign someone up. Let's just forget that. We, our goal, all of you, that you will do so much better in this business if you'll just do one thing, and that is take a very deep breath and understand that your motive is just to get this product on people. That that's your that that's all you want to do. What get it on them? Now through the process, someone may say, "Well, I'm I'm in it. I I don't, I don't even need to try it. I just want it." Well, then sign them up. But if I'm going into a chiropractor's office, a salon, a day spa, a doctor's office, a plastic surgeon's office, any anywhere, my my goal is is to talk less, rap more. That's my goal. Talk less, rap more. I I can't talk them into this. I don't want to sell them into it. I don't want to be salesy. I can't stand to be sold anything, but I truly love to buy. I love to buy. There's nobody that likes to spend more money than I do, but I don't like to be sold. So what I would recommend you do is go in with that beautiful smile that you have, be have your shirt on, look professional, and walk in with a Blitz card. And you're going to talk to the first person, which is the gatekeeper, and that is the receptionist. Her job or his job is to keep you out. So you don't want to go in projecting sales, and you definitely don't want to think you got a gimmick. You want to you want to know what you got. You got that crazy rap thing, and everybody wants to try it, and they do. Now, so you just walk up and you go, hey, I'm Pam. I'm introducing that crazy rap thing to the area. Have you tried it? And you hand them the card and you shut up. And you just get really quiet and you keep smiling and just wait. You just wait. Wait for the response. Don't say another word. That, that Let them talk first. Well, no, I haven't heard of that. What is it? Well, then you point to the card. This is what it is. And these are all the places you can put it. And you can try it for as little as $25. And depending on where you're at, you can also mention the wrap party. But I always mention it because you never know. This is a person you're talking to. She may hate her job. She may want to do wrap parties. You don't know who you're talking to, so don't prejudge them. And then be quiet and let them absorb that. See, this is the, the beauty of a blitz. You're bringing a brand new product to the forefront of their brain, and they don't have a brain cell for it. So they have to they have to wonder what it is. They have to try to absorb what it is. They have to try to recognize what you're saying. And if you say way too much, really, really too fast, they start to act like they know know more about it than you do. They start to get almost defensive because they don't feel smart. Why don't I know about this? Why haven't I heard about this? Uh, I don't want to appear stupid about this. Of course I haven't heard about this. So you want to give them time to absorb the information. Well, what does it do? And then you just flip the card and and you say, this is what it does. And then, well, well, what's in it? Well, this is what's in it. And then you can show them a a fact sheet, a, a supplemental fact sheet on what's in it, an ingredient sheet, the back of the box. Um, you, you can send them, uh, the, uh, we have that brochure uh, that you can uh, text them, say, well, I can text you something right now, I can email you something right now if you don't have anything on you. But con- always use a tool, as many tools as you can to back up a question because you're talking to a potential distributor or a potential customer 
And if you're not using a tool to lead them along the way, then they're going to think they need to know all the stuff that you know. So you want to to show them and not tell them. It's a show business, not a tell business. And so your goal your your goal is not to sell them, not to close them. You're just not going to walk in off the street to a chiropractor and sign them up. They get hit with stuff every single day. But I guess what you guess what you can do, you can go in with a product they've never heard of, they've never seen that shows itself off in 45 minutes and get them wrapped. And while they're wrapped, is when you have the opportunity to pull out your party pad and go through the party pad. And it's as beautiful as that. And if you will follow that, you will be so successful. So let's not try to sell anybody anything. Let's let's work on perfecting the blitz to get the product on them and always be prepared to wrap or get a wrap appointment to come back into that place of business and wrap them when they have a specific amount of time, 45 minutes or more. Okay. Uh, how do you get? How do you host parties, or get people to host parties, or get people to come to parties? Well, you know, the way you get someone to host a party is by being very passionate about what you have and also showing them the benefit of having one, which is they get to wrap for free. They're going to be the head of the, their girlfriends or their guy friends, and they only need a handful of people. And they, just to keep it really, really simple, just water, that's it. You know, keep it as simple for them as possible and say, I, I'd even, you know, I'll help you. Facebook your friends if you like. If you, I'll give you a picture you can use, a before and after, and you can just post it on your, your timeline if you like. And just help them understand the simplicity of it and make it simple for them. And th- they'll host it for you. And then how do you get people to come? Well, you get people to come by being, pa- again, it's like, who wouldn't want to try this? You know, if you're if people aren't coming, they sense that you don't quite believe in what you're promoting. You don't quite believe in the product. There's something not right about it. Or, um, you know, it's just like I would want to know. I would want to try it. And, and so the reasons they're not coming could be, um, one, they think that they have to take their clothes off. It's a wrap. It's an old-fashioned mummy wrap. So these are some of the things that you can initially try to overcome. And what you can ask, too, is why didn't you come? Why why, why didn't you become a loyal customer? What what could I have done differently? What, you know, ask people why they didn't come to the party. And it could be that they thought they had to take their clothes off, that they didn't have the money, and they uh, – they, then you could come around with you could host a party yourself and try it for free. And then that's a way that you can get them hosting. So uh, one thing that we don't do enough of is ask questions on why why didn't you come? You said you were coming. And, and say, is there something that I could have said differently to you? And, and get the specifics. And this will help you understand how to talk to people and how to get them intrigued. And I think the, the words we need to use is simple, it's easy. You just lift your shirt and uh, we just take a before picture and then an after and we use your phone to do that. This is for you to experience this product. So be more enthusiastic, be more passionate, keep it simple, and find out why they're not coming. Ask questions. Always ask questions. Um, okay, how... How to get people to become DT, having problems with this part, everyone is scared to change over. Okay, all right, let's look at that. This is interesting. Everyone is scared to change over. No, they're not. We get hundreds a day. No, everyone is not scared to change over. This is something you, whoever wrote this, really needs to look within on. Um there's a part of you that's scared and it's reflecting back on them. They're just not having that belief. You're, you're not having that belief in you, which is con- conveying back to them that you truly believe in the business. So work your work lies there within you. 
uh, and and I would recommend whoever uh, any of these questions is come to Freedom 2014. If you come to tra- Freedom 2014, you're going to walk out of there, and people are going to feel that you're different, more confident, uh, have more faith and more belief. They're going to sense it automatically. It's just like um, Vedra coming as a ruby, being five months in the in the business to a boot camp as a ruby and not really having the confidence and the faith to build beyond that. And then she comes to a boot camp with just 85 people in the room, but she hears a a testimony from Caroline Close that totally shifts her. And she walks out of there telling Stephanie and Joel that by the end of the year she'll be ambassador. And here's a ruby in five months. How is she going to go to ambassador in seven? Well, she did it because she became confident, because she became passionate, and her belief level rose to beyond the roof so that when she called people that she had talked to before, they could feel it, they could sense it, and they jumped on board with her. So there's your work. It's not Everyone is not scared. They're coming in. People are signing up. And if you're, they, these are things that we all need to work on within if we're sensing any any of that. Um, here's another one that uses that word, scared. What to say to people who are scared of the LC program, the auto shifts? You guys need to embrace the fact that they're getting to try this product at a heavy discount with a $50 membership fee waived and that their only agreement is to purchase one item once a month for three months, that's a steal. I mean, to totally switch this in your brain. That is just an amazing program. And every dollar they spend, they get 10% back, and if they buy over a certain 125 they get free shipping. After their third month going into their fourth, they get it. This is a great program. It's like getting products for free. So totally change this up. I know you're not using that word auto ship, but look, you, we're giving them a fabulous program called Loyal Customer, and they get to try the products with no commitment other than that. It is a fantastic program. Own that program. Believe in that program. Project that out to your to your potential loyals and project it out to your current loyals and keep servicing your current loyals so that they'll stay with you and keep turning them on to more products so that they'll try different products and stay with you with those products. Okay, let's see. Uh, We're looking at being uh, a couple of, of the packs to be able to choose between greens. So we are looking at that, and we are seeing that berry greens is by far the favorite so we're looking at switching some some things up there. All right. Here's a good question. We're getting close to our end time, too, because I have a call at 9. Okay, I'm having so many DTs quit so early in, so I need to know how to keep them going. I know there are a couple that would and could rock this business but get so discouraged in their first month. I know I can't make them stay or work the business and should move on. You just answered your own question. You can't make them stay, and you can't make them to work the business, and you should move on. Now, this is the thing. They're watching you. So you continue on. Now, this is a couple of things that you can do early on to help this. Why are they in the business? Connect more with them on their why. Write it down. Then when you can't find and say, uh, John, you said that you were really interested in making an extra $1,000 a month so you could continue to have your wife stay at home. Is that still what you're passionate about? So get get their why out there on the forefront early on and, and get them to, a, to something, something. Get them to a one-team, one-mission, uh, a, a local training. Get them to something so they can see someone like themselves actually doing the business uh, they, they have to have that uh, core belief. It, they just somebody says something to them that knocks them out. That's typically what happens. And it's usually somebody very close to them that takes them out. 
But, look, the first three years in this, we're trying to figure out how to talk about the product, how to uh, bring it to the marketplace, what we can't say, what we can't say, can say. So for the first three years, nobody stayed with us, no one. Everyone left, every single person. So, I, I, I mean, if I had gone there with them, we wouldn't have a half a, uh, close to a half a billion dollar company. So don't go there with them. You're learning through them too. Understand that you're getting better and better as you go, as people come in and people go out. So maybe they weren't the right ones. Sometimes you have to look and say, should they really have been a distributor in the first place? Did they show that real strong commitment in the first place? And you'll get better and better at knowing when to sign someone as an LC more so than a DT. So you just get better at what you're doing. You stay the course. You'll find people that want to stay in. You'll find your Lori and Quentin's. They're out there, and you just got to do what I did, and that is learn how to talk about this in the beginning. Understand that it's going to take you some time. It's just like if you if you started a new job tomorrow, you wouldn't quit that job in 30 days because you didn't know the job. It might take you a year to, to understand that job properly. So you've got to give yourself some patience and a lot of love and a lot of understanding. You're just not that good in the beginning, and it just takes time. And I wasn't either. It just took time. It took time and understanding how to talk to people and what their responses would be so that I knew how to how to shave words off and say less and say less and say less and just understand to get the product on them. Okay. Pam, hey, real quick, I know we only have yeah. you for a couple more minutes, but yeah. you know, a lot of consistency in in questions that regard are, are regarding you know people that are coming and going and and signing DTs that have fallen off. Can you just speak real briefly? You know, from our position, we can we definitely can see this is just a big law of numbers game. And I know from your perspective, you got to see mm-hmm. it even more. And so, can you just briefly comment on? You know what I'm calling the law of numbers. You just got to keep signing people because you just never know when you, know, you might sign your first uh, major on your first sign, and it may take a hundred people down the road before you get there. All right, here's a great analogy. My mentor in this industry, who unfortunately uh, he was a, uh, an incredible person, he mentored me my first years in network marketing with my first company, and he just died recently of cancer. He's my age. And uh, he was just an incredible human being, to- totally got it, totally got the law of numbers. And it's just, I love math. I love numbers. And I-, I-, I get it, too, after being with him for many years and him teaching me about this. Three people, he put in several hundred people. And three people helped him earn $1.5 million a month 18 months in a row. Three people. Three people. So there you go, guys. Get your three. It might take you a couple hundred. And you know why? Because you just got to learn through this. You know, you got to grow with it. Some of you come with a a strong influence within your uh, connection of, of people, and some don't. Some we have to start from scratch. We just don't have it. We don't have, we're not a connector. And and he didn't have it either. See, everybody told him no. Everybody laughed at him. He was just a teacher. And that's all he was. And he had a big, passionate dream. So everybody quit, but he kept going. And three people that he didn't even know, and two of them he didn't put in, somebody else put in, that he put in that quit. So there you go. Find your three. It might, what if it takes you five years and you make a million and a half a month, 18 months in a row? And that was on a compensation plan that pay that we pay out 8.5 times more than that comp plan. So there's the math. There's the math. I think there's no better analogy than that, Quentin. Thank you, love. All right, guys, let me tell you one last thing. You've got to get your butts in the seat at conference. I can't say it. I want to say it even more than that, but that's the nice southern way to say it, and you've got to be there. You've got to understand 
who we are, where we're coming from, the announcements that will be there. You've got to get that energy within it, and you're worth it. You're worth the investment. Your family is worth the investment. Look at your family. Are they worth the investment of your time and energy to get to to freedom? Yes, they are. Sign up tonight. Get there and know that it will be the best experience of your life that you'll be able to walk out of there and you'll be able to own this opportunity, own this business, and you'll be the one that we'll be talking about. So, Lori and Quentin, thank you so much for having me tonight. If we, if you guys want to do this again next month, we can, and we'll finish up the questions. I love you both. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.